So in the presence of ADH, the collecting duct reabsorbs water. And the driving force for that is the high concentration that we have here in the medulla. So now let's talk about how we get that high concentration. So it all has to do with this part of the kidney right here, the loop of Henle. And this is actually the reason for the existence of the loop of Henle. And the way the loop of Henle does this is actually really complicated. To appreciate the importance of it and the complexity of it, let's first do a little thought experiment. So we're wondering how do we increase the concentration out here in the interstitium? So instead of asking that question, let's just ask ourselves, how would we design a system that would increase the concentration out here? And one thing you could think of without looking at this crazy structure here, this weird loop, is let's just imagine we had a tubule going through the interstitium somewhere in the kidney. And that tubule, just like many parts of the kidney that we've talked about, reabsorbs sodium. So let's say you had some mechanism to reabsorb sodium, and let's imagine it's perhaps the same one that's out here in the loop of Henle. And so that mechanism, just to quickly remind ourselves, is that you have a sodium-potassium ATPase on the basolateral side that pumps sodium out, and that drives the diffusion of sodium into the cell so that sodium gets absorbed across the wall. So what does this pump do overall? Well, it takes sodium ions from here, from the filtrate, and it reabsorbs them, so it puts them back into the interstitium. So what is that gonna do? Well, that's gonna raise the concentration in the interstitium, assuming that water cannot follow. We know that water would want to follow by osmotic pressure, but if we make these membranes impermeable to water, so water can't pass, then the net effect of pumping sodium out is that you are going to increase the concentration out here and decrease the concentration here. So to reflect that, let's draw the larger number of ions out here. So there we go. We've come up with a way that you can increase concentration in the interstitium. It's just using the same pumps that we've always talked about. And so this is actually basically what the kidney does, but there's one big problem with this. The problem is that at some point these pumps are gonna fail. And what do I mean by that? I mean that if you increase the concentration out here a lot, at some point that's gonna cause such a driving force for sodium to diffuse back that the pump is no longer gonna be able to push more sodium out. So at some point the backflow of sodium, because of this huge concentration difference, is going to overwhelm this active pumping of sodium by the sodium potassium ATPase. In other words, this system would have limited power to raise the concentration out here. And if you did this, if you use these exact transporters that you find in the loop of Henle to increase the concentration in the interstitium, you might be able to increase the concentration out here to about 400 milliosms per liter. Remember that blood is 300. And because you pumped sodium out, maybe you would take the filtrate down to 200 milliosms per liter. So you'd be able to establish a difference of 200 milliosms per liter between the inside here and the interstitium. But the thing is that if you actually go into the medulla here and you measure the concentration, it's not 400. It's actually as high as 1,200 milliosms per liter. So it's much higher than you would be able to achieve using this method. So that means that the kidney is actually up to something more intelligent than this.